So, Alex, can I start by asking you what 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 is a software engineer? Well, th that's a very good question uh, because first of all, we cannot agree in the field what is a software engineer, um, and we cannot agree on the differences between software engineering, software design, and software craftsmanship or software craft, as we ended up calling it. So, and the reason is that this um, domain is relatively new and we still kind of find our ground. We still don't know what terms we use and why. And also because it's using something very different than other domains for building. Uh, we are using code and code is a very particular material that is much more connected with knowledge and very connected to writing, very connected with text, but also very connected with technology. From my point of view, software engineering is about building solutions uh, that solve real problems. And to do that, uh, you are not trying to find uh, the perfect solution or the solution that is the most general that solves all the problems in that category. You just try to find the solution that fits the problem that you're working on. And this is where it's different from science, from example, because oh. in science you, you look at solving general problems. Oh, I see. So these are sort of pragmatic solutions for, for specific problems. Yeah, the way I think about it is um, people and the engineers started to build bridges before they knew all the theory about gravity and about forces in the bridges and so on. It's the same with us. We, we get a problem, we try to solve it without necessarily trying to understand all the scientific principles that stay at the base of solving all the category of those problems. And, and so when you started off, you, you started off just now talking about code as a material. So say a bit more about that, because, you know, I'd, I'd always, well, I, I know very little about this at all, but but I'd always thought about code as 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 a sort of, I don't know, a means of doing things. But 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 the way you talk about it, 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 it sounds as if it has a sort of almost a physical uh, presence for you. Um, it does, and it's, it is a bit, it has some strange properties. So code is fundamentally text, which gives us um, a few things. Um, um, it gives us flexibility because we can write all, all types of text and um, group, split large portions of text into uh, smaller portions and connect them in various ways. Um, but it's also a bit more than that, uh, because what happens is that it, uh, code is text that is very constrained, is constrained by the needs of the computer. You need to write code that the computer understand. What this means is that your code needs to be very precise, and people often underestimate the amount of precision required when you are writing code. Computers are not very smart. They just, you just need to tell them everything they need to do. So, and one thing that happened with code is that if you just solve small problems, um, you touch only on these levels, on the level of splitting big pieces of text into smaller pieces and on these constraints. But when you start working on large applications, some other weird things happen. You get things like uh, dependencies inside the text, which make the code very rigid to change. And there's a whole area of inquiry and software design on how to avoid these problems. 
because obviously when we want to build larger applications, there's always changes coming. We keep we need to keep changing uh, the text, the code that uh, works there. And probably the best way to understand that is to think about producing a TV series. When you start producing a TV series, you start with a premise and you start with a few characters and then you develop them. But then based on the way you develop those characters, uh, you cannot suddenly switch them to weird directions. You know, somebody who is a doctor now cannot become overnight a rocket scientist or whatever in your show. Otherwise, you, you, people don't uh, get it any, uh, anymore. And something similar happens to the code. The decisions that you made in the past constrain your future. And, and so, so that, does that mean then that you have to be trying to think ahead as much as you can so that you don't limit yourself or cut your avenues off without perhaps even knowing what those avenues might need to be? Oh, no, you're having to think at different levels. This was our initial attempt in the industry. We tried to fix the requirements and say, you need to give us everything in the beginning and we'll make sure that all that works um, and we'll give you a product that works according to those requirements. Unfortunately, uh, this doesn't work and it doesn't work anymore. And um, I, I'm not sure it ever worked. Um, we now know that it works only in very constrained domains, so in domains where things actually don't change that much. If you think, for example, about making a simulation that is based on physical laws, this is pretty constrained, it's pretty uh, clear. The laws will not change that much in 10 years or so. So you can, uh, write a simulation engine now that has fixed uh, requirements and get away with it. But the problem is that if you want to write something like um, an online store where you can buy things, you always have new requirements there. So you cannot actually fix the, the requirements, you cannot fix the design. And more than that, you cannot think very much ahead because the requirements don't come and the changes don't come predictably. 